This is an introduction into safely handling small to medium sized objects in your museum collection. All of us handle a variety of objects every day. Cups, clothes, vases, phones, bags. So why do we need training in something so straightforward and simple? Museum objects are often more fragile owing to their age or perhaps their usage in the past. And museum objects are often the only surviving examples and are irreplaceable if they're damaged or broken. Donors and lenders and the public expect museums to be safe places for artefacts and for us to care for these for current and future generations. Poor handling of objects can be a common cause of unnecessary and sometimes permanent damage. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, do we really need to handle or move this object? If the answer is no, then just don't move it. If you've decided that it is necessary, perhaps for exhibition, research, photography or conservation, the first thing to do is get yourself ready. This is to make sure you don't accidentally damage an object and at the same time to protect yourself. Remove any lanyards, necklaces, scarves, rings, watches or any other jewellery or clothing that might snag, scratch or rip objects. Be aware that loose sleeves can also knock or catch if you need to reach over objects, so avoid wearing these. Footwear is also important, so don't wear anything that could make you unsteady or liable to trip. And if you're going to be carrying or moving heavy objects, it's worth investing in steel toe cap footwear to protect your feet. And if something is particularly heavy or awkward, you must get somebody else to help you, and if necessary, use a trolley to make it easier. You're likely to need gloves for the majority of objects that you're planning to move or handle. And this is because grease, sweat, salts and food matter transferred from your hands can all cause metals to corrode and make organic objects more attractive to attacks from pests. Nitrile gloves are non-absorbent, which means that they'll also protect you from coming into contact with harmful or toxic substances. Powder-free nitrile gloves are the best option for the majority of objects and make sure the gloves are neither too tight or too loose so that you can feel the object that you're handling. Change your gloves frequently as they'll get dirty and the dirt can be transferred between objects. The exception to this is when you're handling uh, paper objects and some textiles, as gloves can lead to loss of dexterity and fine motor skills required for handling these. In these cases, it's preferable to use clean, dry hands but don't use hand sanitizers or hand cream after you've washed and dried them. After getting yourself ready, you can now think about the area where you're going to be working. There should be no food or liquids anywhere near the objects uh, and keep your area organized and free of clutter. To help protect the objects against the hard surface of the table, I've secured a thickish layer of plaster soap to it, but you could also use bubble wrap with a few layers of acid-free tissue paper over it if you prefer. I've also got a polystyrene bead cushion covered with Tyvek for any delicate or unstable items just to stop them rolling. So now that we have ourselves and our work area prepared we can turn our attention to the object. Take your time to think about the object. What material is it made from? Is it fragile or robust? Is it surface smooth or is it friable? How many parts does it have? What shape, size and weight is it? And where are the points of weakness? There are some general guidelines for all objects. You should always set objects down away from the edge of the shelf, table or other surface. And you should always lower an object gently to avoid chipping the bottom or corners and make sure that the object is stable and cannot topple or roll. Never pick up anything by the handle as there's a possibility that the join will break. And also never pick up anything by the rim as it may snap under its own weight. Support things underneath and at the side. Don't pick up two objects at once and if there are multiple parts to an object then handle them separately. But now we can move on to the objects. Um, ceramics and pottery are easily broken so extra care should be taken when handling them. Um, always use two hands to pick up pieces carefully. Um, this croggan has an uneven base, so I can use some plaster soot 
blocks um, just to stabilize it while I'm looking at it. Keep an eye out for any repairs that might have been done in the past, as this could be a point of weakness, um, along with any hairline cracks. You can see that the Croggan has a number of fine line cracks from the rim down to the body. So be aware that this will be an area of weakness for this object. Also, always be aware of outstanding and protruding decoration, as this may easily be chipped. This teapot has two spouts, a handle, round feet at the base, and a lid. All of these areas could be susceptible to damage when handling or moving it. Always check whether lids are fixed or loose, and if they're loose, take it off and treat it as a separate item. Even if the lid is attached, always support it when turning the piece upside down, and try to never pick up a lid by the knob or by the handle. Like ceramics and pottery, the biggest risk to glass is breakage. So handle these objects in the same way, but be aware that chiseled glass will shatter with only a light tap. So be extra careful when setting down onto a surface. Clouded and iridescent glass will lose its surface easily if handled carelessly or too often. And also be aware that some glass objects contain liquids and specimens, so I take extra care when packing and moving these items. Keep any items containing liquid in a tray to help limit damage if there is any leakage. Old fibres lose their elasticity and become brittle and snap, so regardless of how they look, all old textiles should be handled as if their condition is fragile. When working near textiles, only use pencils to record information so that there's no risk of ink staining from pens and don't lean on textiles or place any pressure on them. Extra care should be taken with fastenings, particularly hooks and eyes, and with any decoration such as tassels, beading or sequins. Small textiles should be laid out flat on foam board or a tray. Larger items can be supported by both arms with a layer of acid-free tissue or Tyvek between your arms and the textile to make sure that your clothes don't get caught on it. If a textile is particularly long or heavy, ask someone else to help you with it so that it doesn't drag or trail on the floor. And if it's particularly fragile, seek the advice of a conservator. Metals are particularly susceptible um, to bare hands as skin acids can cause corrosion and result in rapid tarnishing. So always wear gloves when handling metals. Soldered joints and other joints are often weak and uh, should be handled with care, especially knobs and handles. Some metals like lead can be soft and easily damaged or scratch and thin, delicate metal objects can be easily bent or dented, so handle these types of material gently. Stone artefacts and rock and mineral specimens may appear robust, but they can be easily chipped or broken, and they can also be very heavy. Large pieces of stone will always need several people to carry them safely, and may need specialised equipment, such as a forklift or pallet truck. Never try to move a piece of heavy stone with insufficient personnel and equipment. This is to protect yourself and the object. Smaller stone artefacts and rock and mineral specimens should be treated like ceramics or glass, but because the weight can make them hard to control, stone is at most risk from being set down. Make sure there is plenty of padding in place before you move to avoid chipping corners. A quick word about boxes. Um, don't upturn boxes uh, until you've checked the contents inside, as there may be loose items that might rattle around and be damaged. If locks or fixings are hard to open, don't force them. Seek advice from a conservator. But if you can open the box, make sure that the hinges of the lid are supported while you're inspecting the contents. I've used a square of plastisote here. It's essential to wear gloves when handling photographs, negatives or glass slides, as oil, sweat and acids from the hands can cause permanent damage. Even when wearing gloves, avoid touching the image as much as possible. 
Photographs should be stored in archival elements, pockets or sleeves and only be moved from these if it's unavoidable. These pockets will allow you to see the image clearly while protecting it and you can also write the accession number on it for easy identification. If you do have to remove the image, never allow your fingers to touch the surface of the photograph or negative. Hold them by the edges only with your fingers at right angles to the print or negative. But what if the worst happens? Even with all the preparation and best practice, accidents will sometimes happen and it's worth trying to anticipate what might go wrong so that you don't panic and you can deal confidently with any mishap. Clear all unnecessary people from the area and create a no-go zone around the object that's large enough to include all the debris that might be useful for repair. Photograph the object and debris where it lies. This can be helpful for conservation and repair. Search the area carefully and systematically and collect all the pieces into a tree. Don't be tempted to fit the pieces together as this can damage fragile edges. Document what happened and attach this with the photos to the collections database and forward all this information to a conservator who will advise on what can be done next. And now a quick word about health and safety. Almost all museum collections will have some items that can be a health and safety hazard. So you'll want to be aware of them so that you can protect staff and volunteers who work with them. Using gloves will usually mitigate most risks. However, you should arrange additional training if you suspect that any parts of your collection contain asbestos, mercury, toxins or chemicals. Asbestos can be found in World War II masks and some Bakelite items and other items associated with heat and electricity. And it's worth considering having your collection assessed for asbestos. Thermometers and barometers contain mercury and you should always have a mercury spill kit available when moving or handling these items and somebody trained in how to use it. If you have old Victorian taxidermy in, collection, in your collection, be aware that it may have arsenic in it. Mold can affect paper, textiles and wood and it can cause irreversible damage to collections and it's also a serious health hazard. If you're handling mouldy material, you'll need PPE, including masks, goggles and gloves. And it's worth getting advice from a conservator if you think that you have mould in your collection. In summary, only move an object if it's absolutely necessary. Take your time. Prepare yourself in the area that you're going to work in. Assess the risk to you, assess the risk to the object, and don't panic if things go wrong.